and welcome to Walker High School. Chris Ledoux along with Dan Murphy. And we appreciate you tuning in to tonight's contest between the Walker Wildcats and the St. Helena College and Career Academy. Hawks, Dan, how are you? And welcome back, sir. Thank you, Chris. I'm uh, fantastic. Um, look, getting down to the end of the season already. Can you believe that? Right. We only, I was talking to a friend of mine today and and the season's almost over. It seems like it just started. Right. So it's been it's been exciting for the Walker Wildcats. Coming with an overall record of 18 and 5. Still have not played a district game. That comes up in a couple of weeks, probably in February, early February. 18 and 5 overall. The last game for the Wildcats was a victory over the Amy Warriors. That was a game at home. The Wildcats won that game 68 to 59. The next game was supposed to be against Parkview Baptist, but that game got postponed because of the, the rain. What about St. Helena? What is their last rec uh, current record and last team they played, Dan? St. Helena is 12 and second, and they've actually played a uh, district game already. Um, in their uh, their last game, they played French Settlement. They lost 63 to 57. Um, and their next game, they will be on uh, tomorrow night. They will play Independence, uh, who's three and 12. So, um, you know, back to back nights and and. At different levels, it's, it, it's you know, college doesn't play a whole lot of back-to-back -back until you get to, like, conference tournaments. And right. the pros play back-to-backs, and it's, it's, it's very known that when you, when you watch a pro game, they play back-to-back -back nights. The second night of the back-to-back, -back, the, the team doesn't shoot as well. You know, their, their legs are weak, mm -hmm. and, and shooting comes from your legs. So it be interesting to see, um, see the... Uh, St. Helena tomorrow, because you know they're going to run tonight. Walker's going to get out and run, and they're going to have to keep up with him. So see if that takes a toll on St. Helena for tomorrow night. You are watching the junior varsity game right now between Walker and St. Helena. Wildcats lead this game 28-6. This is the third quarter of the junior varsity game. We thank the digital media guys and girls back at the studio there for giving us the graphics at the bottom of the screen. Um, the, the records that you see it for each team is for the varsity but right now we're watching the junior varsity. i tell you what, number 44 for the junior varsity for St. Helena, very impressive kid. Looks like he's at least six foot eight. Wouldn't you say, Dan? Yeah, he's a he's a tall drink of water. He's six foot eight. Somebody's going to have to get him in the weight room and get him bigger and stronger. But he, he's got something you can't work on in a weight room. <laughs> he's got height. Wildcats come in in District 5-5A, the first place team in the district as far as wins and losses. Wildcats at overall record 18-5. Denham Springs comes in in second place with an overall record of 18-6. Santa Mall with a record of 19-7. East Ascension 12-11. Dutchtown 10 and 11 and Live Oak 9 and 13. Of course, that new District 5, 5A, taking all the 5A schools from Livingston and joining with the 5A schools from Ascension. And uh, St. Helena, man, their this district is spread out. They have they have French Settlement, St. Uh, Fr French Settlement. It's 23 and 3 overall and 2 and 0 in district. So then you have St. Thomas Aquinas over in Slidell. I'm sorry, Hammond. 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 Yeah. I was I was looking I was looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're 13 and nine overall, two and all in district. And you said of St. Helena. St. Helena is about a 40 minute drive north of Walker. Been up there many times. Um, and of course they're 12 and 7 on one. Then you have Pope John Paul the second that's over in Slidell. In Slidell, yeah. So that that's a nice little haul just for a district game. They're 14 and 11 overall, 0 and 1 in district game. North Lake Christian that's right in my backyard over in Covington, uh, 10 and 10, but hasn't played a district game yet. It's, it's kind of strange how someone can play right. two and somebody else play none. And then you have Springfield up the road from uh, from here right down I-12, 7 and 15 and 0-1 in district, and then Independence, it's probably the closest school to St. Helena, and they're 3-12 and 0-1 and in district. So quite a quite a lot of uh, travel for the, in, the school bus, uh, in the school buses to get from venue to venue. Correct. And, of course, this is a non-district game for both of these teams as the Walker Wildcats are a 5A school and St. Helena is a 3A school. Both teams are non-select, so they have to play on that end of the bracket and that, that's a discussion we have had many times and, and speaking of non-select i believe the big vote is tomorrow as as i think everybody knows the executive lhsa executive committee is actually the ones who 
who proposed this bigger split that we're in right now. But they did it without the principal's vote. Well, tomorrow, the principal's vote on this split. So if they said no, it, and, and from what I understand, what I hear, I look. It is strictly a rumor. I, I don't know this to be fact that the principals are going to vote against it. And we're going to go back to the original split. And now it, this won't happen until football next year. The, this, okay. this split we're in will last through the school year. But the, if the principals vote against it tomorrow, then we're going to back, be back to the original split, which we had last year. So very confusing. We'll just have to see how the vote turns out tomorrow. Okay, but... No matter what happens, they're still going to have a split of select and non-select. Only the, they're going to put different teams on either side, correct? Absolutely. The, that is not going away. That split is not going away. Okay. All right, 2.16 to play in the third quarter here of the junior varsity game. Wildcats lead this 32 to 10. And, of course, there's a new LHSAA rule that any time a team gets a 35-point lead or more, then running a uh, running clock. And so, Dan, what are your views on the, the new rule by the LHSAA since we're talking about them? Uh, I love the rule. Um, coaches have figured out a way how to, to circumvent it already. Is when they get up by 33, 34, then they, they'll put some subs in. They'll slow it down. They they want the playing time. They, right. They want you know you can't simulate this in practice, so they want the playing time. So coaches have already started. You know, beginning of the year they weren't doing it because they they weren't used to it yet. But now they're used to it. Now they're they're getting around it. And, you know, the, slowing the game down, and, and it helps both teams. You know, even the team that, that's down a little bit, it, it, it's where they can try to score some more points and then also get some of your young, younger players off the bench to, 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 to contribute as well. You know, as an ex-official, I like it because when a team was getting blown out in the past, we had to go to both coaches and say, you, you okay run the clock? And technically, mm -hmm. technically, if one coach says no, then we can't run it. But I have, that didn't stop me in the past. Okay. <laughs> So we are looking for a district championship, and then, of course, the district will start for the Walker Wildcats, and that will be against Live Oak, and that will be February the 3rd will be the first district game. The Wildcats will play at Live Oak, February the 3rd, at Santa Mall, February the 7th, at excuse me, Denham Springs at home, February the 10th, which will be a big doubleheader right here on WBTR. Cox Channel 19, and if you're looking at us on Rev, that's Channel 144, or if you're on your TV antenna, 36.1. And then the next game will be Dutchtown, will be at home February the 14th and February the 17th. The Wildcats will close out the season versus East Ascension at home as well. And so how do, what about uh, St. Helena's and their district? Uh, St. Helena is, uh, goes to Independence tomorrow night, and then uh, they're going to play non-district against Denham Springs at home. And they go to Pope John Paul. They're playing Scotlandville. I don't know why anyone would want to do that, but they're going to. Then they go uh, to Springfield. Then they're playing Madison Prep. Man, what they're doing is they're loading up some power points. Absolutely. That's exactly what they're doing. Then they, have, they play at a meet, and they finish off with St. Thomas Aquinas at home. So, man, that's, that is a brutal, brutal schedule coming up. I mean, you got, you got Walker. Scotlandville, Madison Prep, all in a couple of weeks. Um, you right. better be ready for that. Right, and those are a lot of teams the Wildcats played earlier. Walker played uh, Port Island, a 19 and one team. We've also played Scotlandville, 21 and two. We lost to, to both of those teams, and also we lost to uh, Madison Prep. So those are some of the losses for the Wildcats. And that is the end of the third quarter of the Junior Varsity game. Wildcats lead this 38 to 15. Um, and, you know, you mentioned about, uh, I believe, February February the 10th. Um, we have Denham Springs girls, boys, varsity doubleheader here. This will be the biggest crowd of the year. This gym will be, they will be hanging from the rafters in here. It will be packed. So. And we will also have the Walker High School Band of Legacy. The, the entire, entire band, band will be here. Yes. Talking to Mr. Eddie Hurst uh, at lunch yesterday. He was saying that the entire band, plus they have some middle school some kids that can high. come and, and, and join us also. Yeah, some junior high band members. It is going to be absolutely crazy that night. Um, if you want to come to a great atmosphere, come that day. Go look. Without everything else, it's Walker and Denim. Right. <laughs> and then add everything else in, it's just going to be crazy. And then it's going to be the Hall of Fame game also. We're going That's to right. be inducting new members into the, into the Walker High School Hall of Fame right there in the gym lobby. It's a, it's a nice little um, touch they have over there. That's right. and some very, very cool thing. That's right. It's going to be great. Great and, night. And, of course, all that will be brought to you right here on the 
WBTR, Fox Channel 19, Rev 144, and if you're watching on the TV antenna, it's 36.1, or you can watch on YouTube. Go to YouTube.com and search Walker High TV, and you can watch all the action there as well. What is Rev? Because I don't, I'm not familiar with that. It's the former ETEL. Oh, ETEL okay. changed okay. the name to, to okay. Rev, yes. Good to know. All right, so... We're ready to start the fourth quarter of the junior varsity game here, but we're going to look at the playoff section here for the Wildcats. We are in Division I non-select, and it's New Iberia, the number one team in the state of Louisiana with an overall record of 20-1. and one. And Rustin comes in number two with an overall record of 20 and two. Zachary, number three, 16 and three, and one of those losses was to Walker right here at Wildcat Gym. Number 14, Ponchatoula, 19 and six. And number five, your Walker Wildcats with an overall record of 18 and five. Finishing out the top 10, Sulphur comes in at number six with an overall record of 20 and six. Number seven is Wachita Paris, 15 and eight. Number eight is Sanama moving up the charts at 19 and seven, a district foe for Walker. Number nine is North Shore, 10 and seven. And number 10 is Barb with an overall record of 14 and seven. And I'll say this, uh, I believe a young man for St. Amon the other day had 44 or 47 points. They beat, I think they beat Dutchtown by 20. Wow. Um, they, he had quite a game. A friend of mine was calling that game, so he's the one who told me um, that that was uh, quite a game. I'm sitting here and I'm pulling up uh, New Iberia's schedule for the year because I looked at it once before, and um, New Iberia's only loss on the year was to Turley's Catholic. And um, just trying to see, because they're number one, I just want to see what kind of, they played Ponchatoula. They beat Ponchatoula by 11 points. And that's the number four team and in the state? that's number four. Um, they, played, uh, they played Liberty, which we played Liberty, I believe we beat Liberty by 20. And uh, they beat Liberty by one point. We beat Liberty 65 to 46. Okay. Okay. And other than that, they haven't played anybody really that we would know of they they kind of they kind of stayed in that part of the state um kind of so, that acadiana area yeah just exactly south so, of lafayette so they you know i, I don't know if, i don't know if we're going to know how good they are. are are they are they deserving of a number one seed well you know what we we've seen zachary firsthand and Correct. they're good we've seen ponchatoula and they're good and obviously we know Walker's good. So there's three teams right there that that may be just as good, if not better, than New Iberia. Just looking at schedules. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, it's right. going to gonna be an interesting playoffs. All right, Dan, what are the other teams in the uh, District 5, 5A? How are they in the non-select Division One power oh, we rankings? Got Denham Springs coming in at 18 and 6, and they're 13 in the power ratings. And East Ascension is 12 and 11. I heard East Ascension is actually a very athletic and talented team. So um, I, I wouldn't, I, I would, you know, they're 18. I would say they're much better than an 18 seed. Then you have Live Oak at number 30. They're 9 and 13 on the year. And Dutchtown is 31, comes in at 31, and they're 11 and 11 on the year. So those are the district teams from District 5, 5A. And, of course, we, uh, we do our homework also. Uh, we're looking at Division 3 non-select, and, of course, that's the division where the Santa Lila Hawks play in. The number one team is Port Allen with an overall record of 21. 20 and 1, and of course the Walker Wildcats played uh, Port Island, and that's one of our losses uh, was to the Port Island Pelicans, and I believe that loss was uh, 47 to 53. And I, I heard they are extremely good. <laughs> and, and the number two team I hear is extremely good also. French like Settlement, the, the Lions from French Settlement right down the road right here, a Livingston Parish School, 23 and 3. One of their losses was to Walker in the, the championship game for the Livingston Parish uh, Basketball Championship. Winfield comes in at number three with an overall record of 17 and 4. Richwood, 19 and 8. Number five is Rayville, 14 and 9. Number six is Patterson, 13 and 4. Number seven, Bill Platt. 14 and 7 and number 8 St. Helena 12 and 7 so St. Helena uh, right there in the top 10 finishing up the top 10 Madison at number 9 17 and 4 then that's not Madison prep that's Madison and number 10 is Marksville 16 and 9 and that's the top 10 in division 3 you know uh, see Marksville number 10 and kind of off subject a true story when I was refereeing football we went to Marksville to do first round of the playoffs and and when we travel for playoffs we always travel with you know jackets and or jackets and ties so we all got jackets and 
we get up to Marksville and the whole crew, we go out to a Wendy's to eat. Uh, to eat. And people kept staring at us, staring at us. All of a sudden, some lady comes up to us and said, are y'all with the FBI? <laughs> and, and we said, we said, you know, and I, 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 was the, I was the white hat of the crew. And I said, I said, no, why? She said, because we all thought y'all with the FBI. That's when they had that, they had that, that murder years ago over uh -huh. there. And they thought we were all with the FBI. We were coming to investigate. <laughs> Never yeah. happened before. No, a very interesting story there, Dan. That's good. <laughs> Just here for uh, the basketball. Finishing up the junior varsity game. Less than two minutes now to play. The Wildcats lead this one 40 to 17. And of course, we appreciate the girls and guys back at the studio there, bringing us all the action. And we, we had our production meeting, and a lot of the girls and guys brand new. And so Michael Hillbun, the teacher uh, back at the studio, does a great job of bringing this broadcast to you. And me and Dan are the only adults that are uh, associated with the broadcast per se. And then it's all the rest of his kids running everything. It is. Um, and we said in our production meeting, we had half the class. That was all all uh, kids who had never done a basketball game before. So if you see the camera on the ceiling tonight, you know, it might be a reason for it. <laughs> so the kids are learning the skill here. Um, that camera angle you're seeing right now on your screen is, is, is kids um, filming this game for you. They, they run all of our wires here, run our, our, our studio things, our, our, the camera angles, our headsets. Back at the studio, they're going to tell us when to take commercials. A lot of the commercials you're going to see here tonight are made by the students here. They got one kid on the on, uh, switching from camera angle to camera angle, one kid on the replay, one kid on the graphics, and so it's, it's, it's amazing all the things they do. And some of the students are in the commercials also. Absolutely. Along with our very own... Uh, uh um, Steve, Steve Johnson, Johnson yes, yes. Uh, at his favorite uh, supermarket. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. So you, we appreciate all the, the sponsors there. So if you are a sponsor, we appreciate you bringing this this broadcast from WBTR. Cox Channel 19, and this game is uh, almost about finished. And whenever this game ends, we'll take our our first commercial break, and uh, well, they're calling in themselves right now. So if we're ready back in the studio, we'll take our break right now. We'll come in and we'll watch everybody warm up, and we'll have the conclusion of this game. So if we're ready for our first commercial back in the studio, we'll take our break right now. You're watching Wildcat basketball on. The I'm Aaron Ellis. Welcome to Wildcat Stadium. Welcome Graduating from Walker High, I served in the Navy, then attended LSU on the GI Bill. I've been fortunate to be able to serve our community in many ways over the years. I want to continue to serve by helping you solve your problems. Aaron Ellis, from Livingston Parish, for Livingston Parish. In life, there are some things that just go together, like a burger and fries peanut butter and jelly, bacon and eggs, and home and auto insurance from State Farm. State Farm's local agents are here to find the right insurance plan that pairs perfectly with you. I'm Byron Gill, and we're proud supporters of the Walker community. Go Wildcats! Call Byron Gill to get a quote today. This game is brought to you by Wildcat Productions. You're watching Walker High School Basketball. Woo! to Walker High School. Chris Ledoux along with Dan Murphy here. Final seconds of the junior varsity game. The Wildcats lead this one 47 to 17 with 13 seconds remaining. And we'll have to see how this game ends up with the final shot. There is a basket by junior varsity players for St. Helena. And that is going to be the end of the contest. Your final score, the Wildcats win this 47 to 20 in the JV game. So we'll shake hands and then we'll have a brief moment where they go and change into their varsity jerseys. And then they'll come out for a 10 minute warm up and then we'll have all the action for you right here on WBTR. Looking at our next broadcast, it will be a double header once again as Denham Springs Yellow Jackets come to town. And that will be February the 10th. Ladies in action at 615 and then the boys at 730. And of course we'll have all of the pageantry and all of the other extracurricular activities that we'll have going on as well. 
Yeah, I can't wait for that one. Um, that, that's going to be fun. But you know, talking about girls, we had Coach Arnold sitting here with us for about 30 minutes uh, while he was eating his nachos before uh, <laughs> before we came on the air. But just kind of put perspective is Walker is number one in the power ratings, of course. And they have a they have about a uh, two and a half point lead in points. And when you talk and you if you go over to like boys uh, uh, from number one to two, the the disparaging the, the difference is less than one. Um, it, it's less than one point. But you go you talk, go to girls and they have a it's actually a two point six one point lead in power points. And that's that's unbelievable. Now, we all know Parkway's number two. and We all know. Uh, uh, Parkway has Miss Michaela Williams, who's signed with LSU, and we've seen her play last year, and she's really good. Um, but you take Barb, the number three team. Walker played Barb this year and beat him by 35. And at that time, Barb was number two. So um, they played, uh, well, they were supposed to play Zachary the other night, and the game didn't happen because of the weather. Um, and Zachary, what's, what's Zachary record? Zachary's number four. They're 21 and three. Denham's 20 and two. Coming, we're going to find out how good Denham is, and Denham's going to find out how good they are on February 10th for sure. Mm -hmm. um, Nacogdoches Central, they just obliterated Nacogdoches Central. I want to say they beat Nacogdoches Central's number seven, and I think um, I think after the game, Corey texted me and said, "Hey, we just beat Nacogdoches Central by 40 or something." I mean, it's the and. They had a tough game against Scotlandville, and I was watching the entire game. I couldn't be here. As Mr. St. Pierre said, I was on assignment. I was working my real job, and <laughs> I was I watched the whole game. And after the game, I was um, or later that night when I got home, I was texting Corey, and I said. Um, first quarter was great I said then your girls got bored and they he said absolutely they got bored they just they they didn't have the same intensity and in order to win state that intensity they had that first quarter against Scotlandville they have to have that intensity every single quarter if they have that intensity every single quarter I, I don't care who we play nobody's going to beat them but if they have that same intensity every right. quarter I don't think anybody's going to beat them so talking about Michaela Williams, uh, one of my favorite stories of high school basketball ever, uh, talking to Jeremy, uh, Corey's best friend, who coaches at uh, uh, Southern University. He goes, let me tell you something about Michaela Williams. And this is last year when she was a junior. He said, Chris, she is the best cut player in the world not playing in the WNBA. I said, what? He said, let me tell it to you again. He said, she is the best player in the world, not playing in the WNBA right now, and she's a junior in high school. So she is that good. Of course, the, the sign with LSU, and they're they're ranked number two in the country, in the state. But they also have one loss, just like Walker has one loss. So they are beatable. They do, but I, I thought the one loss was a forfeit. I, I don't I don't I don't think I, I'll, I'll check that, but I thought the one loss that they had was a forfeit. So. I was going to say, you can just touch on, the, on their, oh, on their that's name true. and they'll bring up their schedule. That's true. But you're going you're to find, Diane's going to get the schedule for us. Looking at the schedule for the Lady Cats, of course, today is January the 26th. The next game, Saturday, will be a junior varsity tournament at Zachary. And Corey was saying that they're going to play Denham Springs at that junior varsity tournament. Now, it's not, not a varsity game. It'll be a junior varsity game. Tuesday, January 31st, they'll play away at East Ascension. That'll be a district game. And then Friday, February the 3rd, they'll play Live Oak with the boys, and that will be at Live Oak, so a big crowd expected over there. Tuesday, February the 7th, Santa Mall will be a home game, and then finally, February the 10th will be the last home game for the Lady Cats, and that will be against Denham Springs. Now, Parkway, Parkway actually, they lost three games out of state uh, back in November. They, uh, they, it wasn't a forfeit. They lost to Fairview, which is a five-class uh, class C team, five, District 5C. Five they lost 69-68. Um, and then they did go play in that tournament in Duncanville, Texas, that Walker was in. Now, I want to say they came out they came out third or fourth. They, they never played Walker in that tournament. 
Looking at the girls' route in the playoffs, if you will, the, the first game will be Thursday, February the 16th. That'll be a bi-district playoff game, and of course, that'll be guaranteed to be here at Wildcat Gym. Lady Cats number one in the state. Of course, the top 16 will get a home playoff game. The next game, Monday, February the 20th, will be regionals, and that depends on what happens in the other game, is whether the Lady Cats will be home or away. Hopefully, it goes chalk, as it, as it says, with the, the favorites win, and we'll have the game here at home, and then Thursday, February the 20th. 23rd will be a quarterfinal game, and of course that's whenever the Lady Cats are looking to cut down the nets, as, as we always are. Yeah, um, I think last year all the games were at home, so it was uh, right. And then, and then even semis and state uh, semifinals was only you know 25 minutes up the interstate, so that was that was uh, that was nice. And the, looking at the boys select and non-select playoffs, Dan. So what do you what do you have um, information on that for the first? On the, the, boys, the boys will start fi uh, Friday, February 24th. And, you know, as right now, Walker will be hosting a home game in that. And then uh, next round, Tuesday, February 28th. And then quarters will be Friday, March the 3rd. And then uh, state will be uh, Marsh Madness will be at Burton Coliseum in Lake Charles, March the 6th through March the 11th. All right. And, of course, that's in Lake Charles. And the Lady Cats will be playing down the road should they make it that far. And that will be the Marsh Madness at... Southeastern University Center at Hammond. That'll be Monday, February the 27th through Saturday, March the 4th. And hopefully we have to take that short 30-minute drive down the road to watch the Lady Cats play. Yeah, you know, we we both went last year, and it was uh, it was a great crowd. I mean, Ponchatoula was there, that helped. But uh, that was a great crowd. Wildcats in action here tonight. And, of course, um, looking at some of the star players for the Wildcats, Lincoln All-State last year and the year before that, Mr. Warren Young from Walker High School, averaging 19 points per game as a junior, and he leads the way here for the Wildcats, and um, looking for good things from Mr. Warren Young, Jr. Now, also for St. Helena, they got some talented players as well that made some honors, right, Dan? Yeah, we have uh, Antoine Baker, Jr., who was the district 7-2-8 uh, MVP last year. And they, they, they haven't taken their shirts. We can't see numbers yet. By by the looks, there is a there is a man of most boys out there. So we're figuring that's that's who it is. We had Jamarcus Mack make all district last year, and Jerry Williams make all district the point guard last year. So to have three guys returning on their team, all seniors, and of course that show goes to show you, you know, why they're 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 so highly ranked in the state of Louisiana at number eight, coming in with overall record of 12 and seven. Yep. Catch a camera right now. We see Coach Hero is actually uh, approving the, the scorebooks. That's very important. And most coaches just sign, but he's actually counting, make sure they're all there because if they call a call a foul, this happened in the game to me. They go to call a foul, and that player's not in the book. It's a, it's a technical foul for everyone. So very important you get that scorebook right, and the referee takes it to both coaches to, to look it over and, and sign it to make sure it's right. There you see the Walker Wildcats varsity team uh, warming up. A couple of fans having a good time uh, in the stands here. Always a great crowd here at Wildcat Gym and, and a great atmosphere. As Mr. St. Pierre, the principal here, has really done a great job as far as creating an atmosphere and with the lights and the laser and the, and the light show and the big the big screen in the, in the corner. Does a great job with everything. Yeah, and, uh, we have the digital media uh, director over at St. Helena here tonight, and he was... Uh, Mr. St. Pierre was showing him all of his new toys over there when he first got here, and, and they just, they're amazed. And I hear for next year, we got some more lights coming. Wow. <laughs> so, can't wait to see that. So when you come over here and we have the introductions, of course, the lights will go off. And of course, the, what is so incredible is digital light, not digital, with the LED lights. So you can turn the, the whole gym off completely dark, do the, do the introduction with the, the spotlights and the green and the yellow spotlights all over the place. And then turn the lights right back on and we're ready to go within one second. Yeah, you remember the good idea is you have to wait about 10, 15 minutes to, right. to make them warm up. <laughs> oh, yeah. And if you watch college, uh, Alabama does a great job with that well. It's with the LED lights. They can turn everything off and every, the whole stadium turns red when they score a touchdown. Uh, and, uh, and then with uh, the install, install them. Oh, they are too? Yeah, oh, that's, that's cool. Yeah, take advantage of technology because the lights, even though you're able to turn them on and off, they're actually more cost efficient as well. They use a lot less electricity. Two minutes left for the warm-ups here, so we're going to take our final break and we'll come back with the 
starting lineups for both of these teams. So we'll take our final break. We'll be right back with more Wildcat basketball on WBTR. Keep it right here. One minute left before we have the introduction from both of these teams. And as we mentioned, all the pageantry that goes on here at, at Wildcat Gym, and it, it's, it's an exciting atmosphere. And um, if you ever get a chance, come out and watch a game here at Wildcat Gym. Yeah, we got uh, the little intro um, right on the big screen here. The, well, the first screen we put up when the gym, the gym was, what, three years old? Correct. And, 19 then, and, the, and finally, the, the, the original screen wasn't big enough, so <laughs> he got a big one, and then he just got some uh, maid to go out in the lobby over the concession stand. Very nice. Yeah, you, you come here, and it's, it's absolutely amazing. We have the seniors for the Wildcats. You have Ja'Cory Thomas, a senior. Warren Young, Jr., a senior. Brandon Bardalis, a senior. Kedrick Brown, a senior. And you also have Makai Varnado, a senior. And the reason I mentioned all those guys, all these seniors, those are the top, those are the starting five for the Wildcats. That's why this team is special, because you have all seniors in the starting lineup, which is what you want as a coach. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd like to welcome you to Wildcat Gymnasium tonight. As the host of Walker Wildcat, thanks so much the Santa Lina Falls. Tonight, if we can have everyone please stand for the National Anthem.
will be jumping against number one and that'll be Jacory Thomas. We are ready for basketball action right here at the Wildcat Gym on this beautiful Thursday night. And we're ready for we got a, a game ball ready to go. And we are ready to jump. Three officials here tonight. Which yeah. always makes for a good crew to have a, a good rotation of three three officials. Yeah, and they're very happy and then we're five minute quarter JV game. <laughs> That'll be well rested. So we'll be Warren Young Jr. handling the ball for the Wildcats over to Brandon Bardalis, number three. And Coach Skiro changing the player as they line up. 13 is Barnado, and number five is going to be Kedrick Brown. And that's where the Wildcats are going to set things up. The only but here is a drive by Kedrick Brown, and it will be a basket for the Wildcats. Two nothing. A lot of great pass in that possession. And uh, what's one thing me and Coach Rogers talked about today? About if, if this team, I, I saw my life flash in front of my eyes there for some reason. <laughs> I thought I was going to get steamrolled. Um, if this team plays as a team and passes the ball and unselfish, there's not too many teams that can, that can beat them. Five is Williams, Jerry Williams, the all district performer last year for St. Helena. Number three is going to be Cheney. 23 is Robinson, and number two is going to be Baker Jr. Rebound this time by Peter Brown. Now, good rebound. Get out, and Walker wants to run, no doubt about it. There is a three pointer by Brandon Bardalis, and Brandon, a 28% free throw, uh, three point shooter. Yeah, that's good to get him out because he hasn't been shooting the ball very well lately. Director Brandon, a 39% free throw, the three point shooter, excuse me for the Wildcats. Big steal this time by Ja'Cory Thomas, and he'll go coast to coast and slam it down. Big basket by Ja'Cory. I think Ja'Cory Thomas will not be playing the game against Hannon this Saturday. He's actually going on a college recruiting trip, I, I understand, so. Oh, okay. okay. He will not be here, and Archbishop of Hannon's a very good team, so. So do you know what college he's going to? Is it's, that the, the it's, a, it's, a, it's a junior college in Can somewhere in Kansas. Oh, I know. Okay. Seven to nothing, the Wildcats lead this game early. And Baker Jr., of course, who was all-district MVP last year, number two for St. Helena. And Robinson over the inside the, the arc is a shot missed by Mack, rebounded by the Wildcats. Barnado quickly down to Ja'Cory Thomas and drives in and scores again. And now we have a timeout on the court. We'll take a break with him. You're watching Wildcat basketball on WBTR. some things that just go together, like a burger and fries, peanut butter and jelly, bacon and eggs, and home and auto insurance from State Farm. State Farm's local agents are here to find the right insurance plan that pairs perfectly with you. I'm Byron Gill, and we're proud supporters of the Walker community. Go Wildcats! Call Byron Gill to get a quote today. This game is brought to you by Wildcat Productions. You're watching Walker High School Basketball. Welcome back to Walker High School. Crystal Dew along with Mr. Dan Murphy here. Wildcats up nine to nothing in the first timeout of the game. The one, the one thing very unique about Walker is whoever, they're so athletic, whoever gets the rebound will take off and go. So, you know, anybody can play point guard on this team off the rebound. So the Hawks, we have a whistle away from the ball here. 
Foul goes against 23. That's going to be against Robinson, his first team foul number one. And I'm not sure uh, exactly what he did trying to... Uh, he kind of gave an elbow trying to clear out space and leave the basket. Nice, nice look by Warren Young Jr. On Ja'Cory Thomas, wide open under the goal. Ja'Cory with another basket, now has six points. And Wildcats with 11. And the Wildcats will go back the other way again. Warren Young Jr. will try his hand at it. They're going, they're, they're manning up. You would think Warren Young would take, take him to the basket like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Quickly out, it's going to be a steal this time by Mack. Mack goes coast to coast and just off the mark, and it will be a foul against the Wildcats. That'll bring Mack to the line. Yep, good call. fluid motion from the free throw line. First foul was against Makai Barnado, his first team foul number one. Jamarcus Mack, all district performer last year as well. He misses that one, rebounded by Kedrick Brown, and the Wildcats will take over. Nice. Beating inside, the keeper oh, kicked it out to Bakai Bornado. Pass was a little too late. He had, he had uh, Keiji Brown for a layup. Williams with the steal. Quickly down and scoring is Jamarcus Mack. And the Hawks get their basket. And Ja'Cory Thomas gets the basket and the foul. Ja'Cory with a quick eight points. Walker's going Walker's to test how, uh, how deep St. Helena is tonight because they, they're going to get tired. This, this is up and down, up and down. And Jeremy Williams with the foul this time on number 12. And Jafuri makes his basket. He has nine points, and he averages 9.5 points per game. So well, he can take a seat. <laughs> We, we all know that's not the way to, to handle the press. 14 to 2 now. Keith Brown will kick it out, and Wildcats will set up for the NBA three pointer. Warren Young Jr. just off the mark there. And it is Brandon Bardalis shooting a three pointer off the mark. Keith Brown with the rebound, and he will have no, no basket as one of the Hawks was in the air. Falling down, looks like it's going to be foul against number 10, Jamarcus Mack, the senior. <laughs> and we had, we had a wide open layup. We missed him. He was, he was standing under there for five seconds. This one goes out of bounds, and it will remain punk basketball. Jerry Williams will take the ball out. Jeremy Williams was wide open under the goal. There's another nice pass. Just off the mark and another rebound by Ja'Cory Thomas having a good night tonight. By the Walker Sr. Warren Young Jr. drives, shoots, and just off the mark. Ready for Warren Young Jr. to start heating up here. Yeah, he's uh, he wants to get in the action. He sees everybody else having so much fun. Quickly out, Jerry Williams shoots off the mark. Rebound quickly under the goal, Mack. And that's two in the, in the paint, Mack has missed already. Over to Brandon Bardalis, oh, quickly. Lost. Another miss in the paint by the Wildcats. Another miss, another miss. Oh, he got high, tough time. It's very frustrating for Kedrick Brown to be right there under the goal and with all those misses. And this time it will be a basket by Jalen Chaney for the Hawks, and he draws the foul and will go to the line. Foul goes against number one, Ja'Cory Thomas, his first team foul number two. <laughs> Coach is always working for a call. Yeah. 
coach Corey Thomas. Another dunk, but this time it misses. Yeah, he, he got, that was a block shot to the rim. Outside, Baker Jr. with the miss. Quickly to Ja'Cory Thomas again and passed a little bit too much on it. Kendrick Brown with the steal, and he gets a shot block. Action very quick oh, it's on both through. sides. And there's a kick out to Cheney. Cheney shoots, and he's off the mark. And quickly down again, this time Makai Bornado has it, and he'll lay it in for the basket. And uh, there's a bunch of St. Helena fans right behind us that are just waiting for one of those threes to go in because every time it goes up in the air, they jump up and get ready to hoot and holler. They are full court trapping. Mack drives and he gets the ball knocked out of his hand by Warren Young Jr. No foul call there. St. Helena is rushing their shots. The, the defense is just all over them. Not a lot of arc on the ball yeah, that not, time by Kedrick Brown. Not the shot you wanted. And of course, this, this seems like a lot of our broadcast where the, the first half is very quickly paced. This one just off the mark by Jalen Cheney. Now wholesale substitution as we have five players come in. It will be number 22, Troy Silve coming in for the Wildcats. And also number four, Clifford, excuse me, uh, KJ Smith Johnson. And number 21, uh, Desmond Atkins. That was the young man who plays the JV game, I believe. So number 21 is gonna be Desmond Atkins, a, a sophomore. <laughs> Center. He's listed as a center here, so going to use his height. We'll have to see how athletic he is of being a sophomore. Quickly out, Troy Silve Jr. shoots and misses. And not, not, the, not the offense that Coach Carroll called. Quickly a three-point shot bouncing around by Marquise Johnson by the Hawks. Brandon Bardalis up and ball goes out of bounds after the contact. Thought he called a foul. Nope, just out of bounds. Good job with the graphics back at the studio there. On the guys and girls in the digital media class. Well, we're gonna have to get them, get them on camera here at some point tonight so we can see all their faces. Troy Silva inside the arc. Can't find the basket, and it will be Antoine Baker Jr. bringing the ball down for the Hawks. Uh, shot, shot selection the last couple minutes has been terrible for Walker. Back to Baker Jr. over to Williams. Williams in the paint. Decides to kick it out. Three-point shot off the mark here. Looks like the Hawks are going to be a big three-point shooting uh, team here. I, I thought he could. I thought he had that two-pointer in the lane, but he kicked it out for three. I agree. Whenever. But my thinking is I'm, I'm a big guy, so anytime I'm in the lane, I'm shooting. Yeah, he takes points. Yeah, not the... Do you have a three-point percentage for uh, Troy Silva? I'm not sure what it is. I don't remember him taking a whole lot. But... No, he, he wasn't listed okay. on the three-point percentages whenever I looked him up. That probably means he shouldn't be shooting three points, <laughs> right? <laughs> Correct. Mm -hmm. Smith-Johnson almost falls there for the Wildcats. He regains his footing. 18 seconds now. We'll have to see if the Hawks are trying for the last shot yeah, here. Yeah, it looks like they are. Nope. And it will be Baker Jr. shooting a three-pointer that's off the mark. Rebounded by the Hawks, and it will be Kedrick Brown bringing the ball down. Quickly down to Smith-Johnson, and Smith-Johnson gets on the scoreboard. And that's cool. That is the end of the first quarter. Your score, Wildcats 18 and the Hawks 4. We'll take a break. You're watching Wildcat Basketball on WBTR. I'm Aaron Ellis. Welcome to Wildcat Stadium in Walker, America. Carlisle's and browse the wide variety of inventory. The abundance of home decor, timeless treasures, and vintage furniture at Carlisle's will make furnishing a new home or redecorating your current home easy and affordable. Take the quick drive to 31010 North Corbin Road. Carlisle's on Corbin, the shop that has it all. Can you just ask someone? I don't think they have a cut on me. Could you please cut a two-inch rub off for him? Absolutely, we're here for you. Just ask. Hey, do y'all make custom sandwich trays? I have a baby shower I need to go to. Absolutely, we're here for you. 
Hmm, I guess I could just ask. Hey, do you have gluten-free flour? Yes, ma'am, we do. We're here for you. At Carter's, we're here for you because not everyone's needs can be found right off the shelf. All you have to do is ask. You're watching Walker High School Basketball only on WBRZ. Welcome back to Walker High School. Chris do along with Mr. Dan Murphy here. We appreciate each and every one of you watching tonight's broadcast between the Walker Wildcats and the visiting St. Helena Hawks. There's Dan. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ready for the second quarter to start right here. Hawks have the ball. Jerry Williams and company here. Mm. And they must have been working on some uh, some defensive trap sets at practice because they've been... Baker there. Jr. with the fadeaway jumper. All-district MVP last year. I don't know if I've seen him trap this much this year. Mm. Next game for the Wildcats will be Saturday the 28th versus Archbishop Hanna. They will take that trip down the road. Fouls against number five. It's going to be against Jerry Williams. His first, team foul number four. Down to Warren Young Jr. now. Warren Young Jr., a two-sport athlete for the Wildcats. Football and... Basketball, and now we have a three-point shot this time by Troy Silk Jr. Uh, I believe that's his first three-pointer of the year. He's shooting 33% tonight. He stepped out of bounds right in front of us. So I thought Baker steps out of bounds. And I, thought, I thought Walker got away with a reach and foul. Austin Workman reached in before out of bounds, but he let it go. Kai Barnado set to come back in the game here. Troy Silva will line up another three-pointer. This one just off the mark on a rebound by Solomon Robinson for the Hawks. Quickly down and another three-pointer that's going to be off the mark. And that was partially blocked. Head coach for the St. Helena College and Career Academy, uh, Mr. Marlon Robinson Sr., assisted by Devin Johnson and Byron Jackson. Quickly inside, Varnado at the elbow, shoots just off the mark. Going to be rebounded by Jerry Williams, and the Hawks will have the ball once again. And I'll say it's St. Helena, the superintendent of school St. Helena, Dr. Kelly Joseph. Uh, me and Mr. St. Pierre met her several times at meetings, and she is just an absolutely delightful person. She is a great person to deal with. Makai Varnado gets in the basket. Four points for him, 23 now for the Wildcats, 23 to 6. Wildcats are really shooting the ball well and, and putting together the offensive plan as a team for the coach Ski Row here. At the elbow, shooting and missing is Cheney. Look, ball Saint, goes out of bounds. St. Helena's had shots. They, they've, they've had makeable shots. They're just not making any. They're just, I mean, they, they probably they probably need to drop the ball to the goal and try to draw some foul and get some two pointers in the lane because they're they're uh, I believe they're over from three. Yes, they are. They haven't made any threes and they've shot about five or six of them. Around. Cheney checks out as Atkins checks out for the Hawks. Quickly down to Workman at the box, shoots and misses. Rebound by Williams. Basket this time by the Wildcats, and that will be K.J. Smith-Johnson with another basket. He now has four points on the night. I think he wanted to go, go up and try to slam it, but he didn't want to miss it. <laughs> Mack, a little jump pass. Just off the mark is Javen Williams. And it will be a basket by Robinson. Robinson now with two points. Some fans wanted to travel by the three-point line. When I don't disagree. I don't know how you can get from the front of the three-point line from behind it without dribbling and taking two steps. McCoy want to go open lane, drive, shoots just off the mark, rebounded by Robinson. And he, he was anticipating the contact, which didn't come. He could have just went straight up and had an easy layup. Workman almost with a steal there. Breaker Jr. shoots and scores. So Antoine Baker Jr., a senior, gets another basket. 
to Barna, though. We'll, we'll bring it down quickly for the Wildcats. Yeah, 15 point lead. Um, Want to get it, get this up to 20 plus at half and get some youngsters some playing time. Steal this time by Baker Jr. Baker Jr. drives and can't find the basket. Rebound and put back very quickly will be uh, Javen Williams. His first basket of the night. Um, Coach Carroll said enough is enough. Kedrick Brown and Warren Young Jr. right in front of us, ready to check back into the game. Smith Johnson shoots and scores a three-pointer. Coach Carroll a little upset. He called the play, and the play was there, and the pass was really late. Johnson was sitting up at a three-point line for about two or three seconds, just waiting for the pass. Clifford K.J. Smith-Johnson is a 33% three-point shooter for the Wildcats. We have a new addition to the roster, Mr. Carleon Joseph. Moved up from the junior varsity squad with his great play there. He'll be checking in for the Wildcats here on the next whistle. <clears throat> Coach Skiro changing the play as the Wildcats have the ball in their possession and he sees what, what offense the Hawks are in. Foul goes against number three. That's going to be Jalen Chaney. He wants he his wa first. He found him a five. Go ahead, Dan. He wants ball movement because when when there's no ball movement and everything's just stagnant, the, St. Helena doesn't have to play defense. Ball movement, get ball movement, and and people without the ball move, and you're going to get somebody open for a layup. KJ Smith Johnson, a 80% free throw shooter for the Wildcats. He is the highest percentage of free throw shooters for the team. And misses both of, both of them. And rebounded by Robinson. Looked like he was diving after the loose ball there. And, um, and this one goes out of bounds and it will remain Hawk basketball. Checking in now will be Carleon Joseph, a sophomore. Checking out will be Smith Johnson. See if he's nervous getting into the varsity game. Barnado with the block, with the steal, excuse me. Kedrick Brown, fancy footwork, and he scores. Looks like they're going to do a little one-two-two two trap here. And you wonder how much Coach Corey Arnold and Coach Steele will talk about the trap and what to do it and, and some of their little secrets, oh, if you will. will. I think it's going to be a traveling call against Warnado before the basket. Yeah, I think he took four steps, not three. Wait, 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 wait. I thought you wanted me to allow two. Uh, <laughs> Is that part of your joke? <laughs> two that they can see. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> checking in for the Wildcats will be number 23, Braylon Montgomery. Checking out will be Makai Warnado. So new, new faces out there for the Wildcats. Mack drives at the blocks, shoots and scores. Marcus, Jamarcus Mack with four points now. We we'll maybe see, uh, try to, well. Warren Young Jr. shoots, uh -huh. misses. I don't think that was the play that they were calling. I think they wanted a little high-low action there, but it was just a high action. Ja'Cory Thomas with another basket, 11 points tonight, and he draws the foul. Foul goes against number two, Baker Jr., his first. He found number six. That will be Ja'Cory to the line to shoot his and one. Walker being a one and one the rest of the half. Ja'Cory, a 56% free throw shooter. Shoots and misses. The Wildcats not having a very good night from the line here tonight. What do we got here? Uh, we have a foul against 23. That's going to be against Solomon Robinson. Oh, correction, that's against Wildcats. Braylon Montgomery, his first team foul number three. Comes the trap. Quickly over here. I'd like to thank Williams for catching that ball, not letting him hit our table. Warren Young Jr. drives, shoots, and scores. That's his first basket of the night. And a nice defense. Look, you're up by 20. Warren Young just scored his first two. I, I, we'll take that every time. I mean, if he doesn't have to score, he's playing great defense. And they are swarming tonight. 
Three-point shot that does find the bottom of the basket. That is going to be Marquise Johnson with a three-pointer for the Hawks. Quickly over Joseph. And Corleone Joseph gets a basket. That's a nice little job hanging in the air there by the, by the youngster. Corleone Joseph, a sophomore, just added to the roster, the varsity roster last week. Or the last game we, we, were, we were playing at home that I remember him being put on the roster. Man, that looked like Ja'Cory Thomas running for a post pattern. <laughs> he took off across the court. And, you know, Joseph, a, a good example. Oh, we have a timeout on the court. Okay, we'll take a timeout. We'll take a break with him. You're watching Wildcat Basketball on WBTR. Carlisle's on Corbin, nominated for Best of 225, is Walker's newest vintage and gift store. Our team of vendors want to invite you to come on in and browse the wide variety of inventory. The abundance of home decor, timeless treasures, and vintage furniture at Carlisle's will make furnishing a new home or redecorating your current home easy and affordable. Take the quick drive to 31010 North Corbin Road. Carlisle's on Corbin, the shop that has it all. Life's hard. You want to get it right, we want to help. Maybe you feel like Christians are more known for what they're against. But we want you to know that God is for you and we are for you. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, we have a place for you. We'd love for you to come and check it out. This is Walker High School Basketball, brought to you by Wildcat Productions. Welcome back to Walker High School. Chris will do along with Mr. Dan Murphy here. We are one minute and 17 seconds away from halftime. There you see the student section here for the Wildcats. Always a, a great turnout by the student section. They look like they're napping. Well, got to get them a little excited. They got to time out. They got to keep it up the pace too much during the game, I guess. They, I'm trying to take up for the students here. <laughs> here we go. Back to the action here. Looks like we'll have the Walker High School Golden Wildcats to perform at halftime. Of course, that's the dance team here at Walker High School. I see Miss Carmen Rotolo. Getting ready to play the music for the ladies. A steal this time by the Wildcats. Warren Young Jr. tries to do the alley oop and it bounces off the wrong way. Uh, trying to get an alley oop to. That's goaltending. That was goaltending. Jagori Thomas, goaltending, no call. <laughs> Referee right into the basket. This time Jagori Thomas, they slams it down. And it will be a basket by Jagori. 13 points now for Jagori Thomas. The basket is good. Oh, Foul goes against number two, Antoine Baker Jr. That's his second team foul, number seven, and Jagori Thomas will go to the line and shoot his and one. I looked at that again, and I, that, I was really close. That may not have been goaltender. Jagori now two for three Side from the line. line. They're going, they're going man now. You know what, Jamarcus Mack is having a good game for the Hawks here. Really plays well, very athletic. He looks like a linebacker. He does. Outside shot scores, and just as I mentioned his name. Six points now for Mack. Less than 30 seconds now. You can hear Coach Ski Row calling out the plays here. Trying to get his team to get a quick basket here before halftime. Yeah, they're just trying to, trying to get a backdoor cut for a layup here. Quickly, Brown feeds inside. Oh, we had a position there. Ball goes out of bounds. Trying to get it into Braylon Montgomery. And the ball goes out of bounds. Looks like the Hawks will try to have the last basket here. They get it across quickly. And they do not get a shot off. We are at halftime. Your score, Wildcats 39 and the Hawks 19. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have the Walker High School Golden Wildcats performing for you. We're watching Walker basketball on WBTR. Hey, my name
My name is George, and I love the Chick-fil-A grilled nuggets. It's like me grilling at home. It tastes very similar to that. My dream was always to help other people, but when I tried to start my own business, I quickly realized I was in over my head. That's when I called Alina Levine. She helped me navigate the complicated business of starting a business, but the help didn't stop there. Her friendly team of accounting experts handle all of the things that I never thought of when I started this journey, because I started my business to be a counselor, not an accountant. Thanks to Alina, now I'm able to focus on doing what I love, helping other people. You're watching Walker High School Basketball, brought to you by Wildcat Productions. <laughs> FMM is a full-service turnkey a construction company that provides unsurpassed quality and customer service to our commercial and residential clients. We offer in-house HVAC, electrical, plumbing, and roofing services, as well as a number of everyday handyman repairs. At Facilities Maintenance Management, we want to be your single vendor solution. Are you tired of local car commercials and their corny one-liners? Well, let's see how many we can fit into 30 seconds. We're exploding with deals. We're taking high prices and kicking them to the curb. This game is brought to you by Wildcat Productions. You're watching Walker High School Basketball. What's up, Walker? <laughs> I'm Valerie. I'm Mackenzie. And we're going to bring you the halftime show. Woo! All right, tonight's score is 1939, Walker winning. What? Let's go Wildcats. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to get to know your teachers more? Well, let's take a look at one of our teachers at Walker High, Miss Norman. That's great. That's good to hear. I have some questions to ask you. Are you ready? Yep, give them to me. All right. What's one thing people don't know about you? Oh, I love to rock climb. That's awesome. That sounds like fun. What's a book that everyone should read? Oh, I have the perfect one. The Hate You Give. That's a great book. I've read that a few times. <laughs> it's a classic. It's great. Is this your book area? This is. All of our lovely books. That's awesome. It's very organized. Thank very you. organized. Thank you. If you could describe yourself in a hashtag, what would it be? Oh, yeah. Definitely hashtag should have been a preschool teacher. <laughs> Seems legit. What's your favorite song at the moment? 
Ooh, if I'm not blasting Young Boy in my ears, probably anything by Sierra Farrell. She's a great artist. What's your favorite smell? Probably teenagers' gym bag after they leave PE. Oh, wow. Oh, now, wow. In all seriousness, though, definitely the smell of walking down the hallway and smelling the cookie site cookies. Delicious. Uh, sweet tea or coffee? Definitely sweet tea. Sweet tea all the way. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. If you could switch lives with someone, who would it be? Probably my dog because she gets to lay in bed all day and be cozy. <laughs> that's sweet. That's sweet. If you weren't a teacher, what career would you pursue in? Ooh, probably a florist or a mountain guide. That's awesome. What skill are you mastering at the moment? I am learning how to crochet. That's cute. I love it. <laughs> thank I you. like the lights you have up here. This well, is awesome. It's very pretty. You have a secret talent? I can hold a handstand for a long time. Let me see. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yay! <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Miss Norman. Well, of course, come back anytime. My classroom is always open to you. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day. Adios. OMG, that video reminded me of Vogue. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. Right, me neither. All right, let's go take a look at our student athletes of the week. Let's go! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, would you please turn your attention to the scoreboard for our presentation of our student athletes of the week. Let's show some love for these outstanding Walker Wildcats. Thank you for your support, and we'll see you next week with more Outstanding Student Athletes of the Week. Wow, what a wrestler. For real, I didn't know they used trumpets. <laughs> well... Here, folks, that's the end of our halftime show. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you all enjoy the basketball game. <laughs> Woo! Bye! Yay! Bye! <laughs> FMM is a full-service, turnkey maintenance and construction company that provides unsurpassed quality and customer service to our commercial and residential clients. We offer in-house HVAC, electrical, plumbing, and roofing services, as well as a number of everyday handyman repairs. At Facilities Maintenance Management, we want to be your single vendor solution. Are you tired of local car commercials and their corny one-liners? Well, let's see how many we can fit into 30 seconds. We're exploding with deals. We're taking high prices and taking them to the curb. And there's a reason we've been the number one Chevrolet dealer in Baton Rouge for the last 34 years. Because we have a huge selection of vehicles and flashing text including the Equinox, the Traverse, the Malibu, and much more. more. So come and see us today or visit online and let us find the vehicle that's perfect for you. This game is brought to you by Wildcat Productions. You're watching Walker High School Basketball. Are you uncomfortably hot all day? Absolutely dripping in sweat? Are you having a hard time with your feet? is what you need. At Kent's HVAC, we have many services to offer, such as AC repair, tune-ups, AC installments, and much more. Our locally owned company is proud to provide 24 seven services and send trusted employees to assist with any problems you may have. We make it a priority to give your family the comfort we know you deserve. Call us for all your HVAC needs. Sharky is a local, licensed, and reputable HVAC contractor. They support Livingston Parish Public Schools and surrounding parishes. Sharkey specializes in maintenance, service, repairs of all HVAC equipment, and offering competitive rates. Call us at 225-222-3332 and find us on Facebook at Sharkey Mechanical Services, LLC. You're watching Walker High School Basketball only on WBRZ. <laughs> Welcome back to Walker High School. Chris will do along with Mr. Dan Murphy here. The Wildcats are just getting out of halftime. We have 36 seconds, and Mr. Austin Fridge is going to stop the clock right there. Austin, the school board operator right here at Walker High School, does a fantastic job operating that big monster. 
in the corner there, as you can see, keeps track of all the, the fouls, all the points for both teams and each individual player. Some, somebody comes in, somebody goes out, he just takes care of it immediately. You don't even miss the beat. Back to live action now as the Wildcats taking on the Horn, ha Hawks here. And coming in and scoring is going to be Kedrick Brown getting on the scoreboard first for the Wildcats this half. And Walker, Walker uh, right, right where they left off, they averaged over two points a minute in the first half. So... Um, very good first half offensively for, for Walker. Jerry Williams scores for the Hawks. Kick out to Brandon Bardalis. Not much arc on that one. And it will be Jamarcus Mack with the rebound for the Hawks. And that was a, that was a line drive. Jalen Chaney drives, shoots, and scores, and he'll draw the foul, and he'll go to the line to shoot his and one. Foul goes against number three, Brandon Bardalis. His first team foul number one. Cheney, a senior shooting guard, shoots and makes his and one. Quickly down, Jacory Thomas shoots and scores. Jacory with 16 points here tonight, averaging 9.5 per game. That was way too quick. I, I looked out of my book to put the points in, and they scored already. <laughs> Two versus two as Warren Young Jr. will guard Baker Jr. Ball goes out of bounds. We have a substitute coming in for the Hawks. It will be Jeremy Williams, number 12. Coming out will be number 23, Solomon Robinson. They have three Robertsons. Jawarin, Jamarian, and you also have Solomon Robinson. And then you have Williams, you have Jeremy Williams, Javen Williams, and Jerry Williams. And we have two Bakers, we have Antoine and and to Ryan Baker as well. Very interesting. Oh, well, it's traveling. And now we have a traveling <laughs> call against the Wildcats. I think the ball got stuck to his hand. He, I don't, I don't, I don't now, quite know what happened. Now, sometimes they would do the juggling call to simulate that, or it was just a, a travel? No, it was a travel. He went to go, he went to go turn, the, like, turn the ball over, and he never turned it over. He just ran with it. Max shoots and misses. Barnado with the rebound. Go the other way with Warren Young Jr. Kick it out and try to set up their offense. Oh, he had a layup. All you do is turn around. And again, you know, if you're in the paint, I'm, I'm all for shooting the ball. So, especially when you're a big guy like Varnado. Makai Varnado comes in listed at six foot three. I believe he's gotten taller throughout his senior year. Yeah, he looks taller than six three. Warren Young in the lane, kicks it out. Brown. Over in the corner, Bornado will get it. We have a traveling call. <laughs> I believe before the traveling call, we got we got a, a relax <laughs> to the to the uh, San Helena coach. And he blew us to turn around and said, "Relax, travel." And then he called travel. Yeah. <laughs> I think you call travel, then on your way back down, you say, Co you, Coach, relax. I got this. Mack drives, shoots, misses, rebounded by Barnado. It will be Warren Young Jr. makes a move, and he will draw the foul and go to the line to shoot two. Foul goes against number two, Baker Jr., his third, team foul number one. Warren Young Jr.'s first trip to the line. Warren Young with only two points here. Warren Young misses his first. Warren Young a 78% free throw shooter for the Wildcats. I'm not sure what he did to his left hand. It's all taped up. Of course, Warren Young a 4-5-A first team all district performer, second team all state, Livingston Parish MVP. Makes the second free throw. I do not see his parents here tonight, which is the first. Well, his dad had surgery. Oh, okay. I just, Didn't uh, know that. Yeah, Miss uh, Mioka Young said she's um, had a procedure, and so hopefully Mr. Warren Young Sr. is recovering. And now we have a whistle. That's a reach around. Got him, well, you got him on the back of the arm. Foul number five with Kedrick Brown, his first team foul number two. A little bit of contact there, no foul called. Again, good job defensively by the Wildcats here tonight. 
Brown with the rebound, and we'll go the other way. Yeah, if he would have looked up, he had, he had Barzo streaking down the court. That's once again, I said, I said, any any of the five that get the rebound for Walker, they can play point guard. Everybody else just takes off down the floor. And that's a good, good thing to have there for the Wildcats. Have that many people that can handle the ball. Of course, being the number five ranked power ranked team in the state um, shows that it is working for the Wildcats. I haven't seen it to this extent so far this year, though. They are just nice pass. Now we have a traveling call against Warren Young Jr. Warren Young Jr. averaging 14.8 points per game. He has three right now. Kicking it out to Cheney. Cheney off the mark. If he'd have followed a shot, the ball would have come right back to him. Again, next game for the Hawks will be Friday tomorrow versus Independence at Independence. Oh, foul for three. Foul goes against number three, Jalen Chaney. Yeah, three shots. And that will bring Brandon Mordalis to the rare three-point. Three shot from the free throw line. Brandon misses the first. Brandon, a 60% free throw shooter. with four points. And Brandon gets two out of three. He doesn't have a whole lot of arc on those free throws either. Line drives, but they went two, two out of three went in. 46-24 now our score. Kind of a, a subdued crowd here, if you will, at the Wildcat gym. Very quiet. Foul goes against number five, Kedrick Brown, his second, team foul number three. And here comes the line change. Whole new five. We'll have to see how fast Austin gets it into the scoreboard. There it is, done. Just that fast. He does a tremendous job there. Inbounding will be Williams. Baker Jr. being guarded by Austin Workman there. Austin Workman, a two-sport athlete for the Wildcats as well, playing some football as well. Quickly at the top of the arc, Baker Jr. misses the three-pointer. So, well, Coach Burrell wants to run a little emotion here, but they didn't do many motion. They didn't listen to the, the call. Joseph misses the three-pointer, and Mack with the rebound and going the other way. This is a three-point basket this time. Jalen Chaney is shooting guard. Joseph passes it off, and nice little lay-in that time by Braylon Montgomery gets his first basket of the game. Nice-looking circus shot by Williams, but couldn't get the basket to fall. Yeah, you're up by 21. Get a good shot. Pass the ball around and get a good shot. Joseph has a good look at it. Shoots and misses. Gets his rebound. Smith Johnson will draw the foul. Foul goes on number two. Antoine Baker Jr. That's four. His fourth. Team foul number three. So Antoine Baker Jr., a, a Dahl District MVP last year for the Hawks in foul trouble here. And you know as a player, when you get that fourth, you look to the bench and see who's coming in for you. Smith Johnson with a three-pointer. That's his second of the night. Smith Johnson now with three points for the, excuse me, 10 points total. And Cheney just hit a basket while you were at <laughs> Going quickly. Corey Thomas leads all scorers with 16. All scorers on the floor right now. You have Smith Johnson with 10, and you also have Jalen Cheney with 10. 
We have a technical foul, number 10, Gold, Jamarcus Mack. That'll be a technical foul against him, and that will send Carly on Joseph to the line. You get a technical and a personal? I think he got a technical and a personal. So that's three fouls. Did he get a technical and a personal? Okay. So, so he, also, all right, he also did get a. So that's uh, that's the personal one he just shot against uh, Carleon Joseph. And Joseph misses both of them. Now at the line for the Wildcats to shoot the check technical will be 22 Troy Silva, and he misses that one as well. And we, were, we were asking the scores table about the personal and technical. We have the highest paid scorekeeper in the district tonight. Please, and I, the, I, hope, I hope she's getting paid well tonight. <laughs> I'm going to let you continue with that or choose to stop, whatever you want to do. <laughs> Smith Johnson quickly over to Troy Silva, who drives, shoots, and scores. Silva now with five points. Wow, okay. Just to explain that, uh, Yoka Young usually keeps the book, but uh, Coach Kiro's wife is uh, keeping the book tonight. So always good to have a wife, a wife that knows the, the sport you're coaching. <laughs> She's been around since I've known Skiro, which she's been around for quite a while now. So, Ooh. that was close. Foul goes against number four, KJ Smith Johnson. His Why? first team foul, number four. Why are we taking the ball out on the baseline? That makes no sense. I must have missed something. Quickly in and up and missing is Cheney. Quickly down, oh. Brendan Montgomery gets the ball, knocks out Joseph quickly. That was a great pass with the basket. That was, that was a great points. job pretending to miss the shot on the other side of the basket. Kick it out, another three-pointer by the Hawks, and there it is, Jalen Cheney with a three-pointer. 13 points now for Cheney. Troy Silva Jr. drives, shoots, and scores. We're going to have to ditch the scorebooks because every time we look down, somebody scores. 57 to 32 now. It was 39 and 19 at halftime, and we're in the third quarter here. We, we knew this was going to be up and down, up and down. Quickly inside, drive shooting and missing is Sylvester. And he, Braden Sylvester Jr. getting in the game now. And he hurried that when he got a little nervous. He had he had uh, the big sophomore on him and thousand number four, KJ Smith Johnson, his second, his team foul number five. I, I, and he said, I didn't even hit him. I, I, I do not <laughs> believe he did hit him. It's not, look, in a 57 to 32 game, first of all, you don't take a shot like that. But, you know, that's, you want to hang your hat on that foul in a 25-point game? Looks like the referee's having a little conversation over there with Jerry Williams, making sure they're on the same page. And this one goes out of bounds. Foul goes against oh, 32. It's a 23 or... Foul goes against, correction, 23. Against Robinson, his second. Um, well, uh, once again, that, that call just baffles me. It's a 25-point game, and we're going to call just knick-knack foul, touch fouls. Common sense, guys. And now we have a carrying call against Smith Johnson. <laughs> Fans are entertaining here tonight. Yeah, we got a we got a little too much John going back and forth here towards the refs, towards each other. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if we get another technical tonight. Marquise Johnson checks back into the game for the Hawks here. A minute to play now. A minute and two seconds in the third quarter. Checking in for the Wildcats will be Michael Donmeyer, number 34. 
First time we've seen him tonight for the Wildcats. Smith Johnson shoots just off the mark for the three-pointer. Quickly down, and the Hawks will now set up their offense. Yeah, probably not the shot that Coach Gear was looking for. He, he just wants to see ball movement. Yeah. Chaney draws a foul. Foul goes against 22. Troy Silve, his first, team foul number six. Chaney at the line to shoot two. Makes the first. Our next broadcast on television will be Friday, February the 10th. Take on Denham Springs Yellow Jackets. Double header action as the Lady Cats will play the Lady Jackets and the boys, boys will play Wildcats versus Yellow Jackets. Three point shot by Jerry Williams as Williams scores. And we have a steal on the inbound. Foul goes against 22, Troy Silve, his second, team foul number seven. <coughs> Going to be uh, shooting free throws the rest of the night for both teams. <laughs> great, great camera shot there by Walker High School Digital Media Class. All right, all the camera angles you're seeing out here are from Walker High School Digital Media Class, 15, 16, 17-year-olds. Doing a great job of bringing you this production. driving and shooting and no basket. We got a foul first on the floor going to be against number five, Jerry Williams, his second team foul number seven. Well, we got a second. Do we have a camera in the studio? Can we get uh, our hardworking uh, students a little TV time? One and one now will be Smith Johnson at the line. Shoots and makes the first. He's now one out of three from the line. Shoots and makes the second. Smith Johnson now with 12 points. 10 seconds now. Here is a three-point shot just off the mark. Wildcats will rebound it. Got to get down to court in three seconds now. Quickly over to Joseph, and the ball goes over his head and out of bounds. That's the end of the third quarter. Your score, Wildcats 59, and the Hawks 36. We'll take a break. We'll be right back with more Wildcat basketball on WBTR. that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in. Roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. This is Walker High School Basketball, brought to you by Wildcat Productions. the digital media guys and girls back there in the studio <laughs> having a good time there you see working a switcher and <laughs> having some fun <laughs> mr michael hillbun does a great job of leading the, that crew back there there you go <clears throat> back to live action here we start the fourth quarter hawks will continue with their possession here Quickly Cheney now, they're going around the dark here. Next game for the Wildcats will be Saturday the 28th, taking on Archbishop Hanna. Our last broadcast of the year for the boys will be against East Ascension Friday, February the 17th. 
And the basket this time by the Hawks will be Cheney. Scoring now has 16 points. Warren Young Jr. in quickly, missing, and then Thomas going up quickly and missing as well. One of those, one of those nights for Warren. Baker kicks it out, shoots, misses. Skiro kind of rotating a couple of guys around, make sure the legs in game shape, if you will. And yeah. Yeah, you know, 21-point game. And, and, look, I've been very impressed with St. Helena. After that initial onslaught, they played uh, they played Walker pretty tight. The Hawks had 19 yes. points at half, and they scored 17 points in the third quarter. So offense really coming alive for St. Helena in the third quarter. This is going to be a foul going to be called. Foul goes against three, and that's against Brandon Bordalis, his second team foul number eight. I'm, I'm not sure Brandon touched him. That will bring Johnson to the line. Shooting guard senior for the Hawks. That'll be Adam on the arm. One in one situation. Johnson misses the front end. Warren Young tries to do the alley oop to Brown. Brandon Bordalis. Again, Brandon shooting the three-point. There's not much arc on his ball tonight. You know, we would like to see a little bit higher arc and release for Bardalis. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Even his free throws seem to be line drives. Oh. He, try, he tried to make a tough pass, and he had a teammate. Uh, actually, he should have just kept going to the goal, but he had a teammate standing right to the right of him. It feels like a Friday night. Playing out here on a Thursday. Especially since I don't have to work tomorrow. Are you gonna be on assignment again, Dan? I am on assignment. I, I, what, somebody has to go to Daytona Beach, so it might as well be me. Now we have a jump ball. As Makai Bornado and Robinson get tied up. I'll be up before you tomorrow for a change. I'm getting up at four like I always do, so I'll be up at two. Oh, yeah, you will be up early <laughs> before me. Bobcats set up their offense once again. Varnado quickly in. Thomas drives, shoots, and scores. Corey Thomas now with 18 points tonight. Could easily have been in one, but maybe the refs have called off the dogs, too. In the paint, shooting in, missing is Jerry Williams. Will be Baker Jr. shooting in off the mark, and the Hawks get another rebound. Set up their offense one more chance. I tell you what, they they definitely have not quit. They're they're a tenacious team. They keep going out. They're very quick. Foul goes against number five, Kedrick Brown, his third team foul number nine. Which again, you know, the Hawks have three all-district performers starting tonight. All three of them are seniors, so. Cheney makes the first free throw. Cheney now with 17 points for the Hawks. Shoots and scores again. Of course, Coach Marlon Robinson Sr. has got to be happy with Cheney's performance tonight. Yeah, I'm very impressed. I said they're a guard, guard heavy lineup. Corey Thomas draws the foul and he'll go to the line to shoot two. <coughs> foul officially against 23. That's going to be against Solomon Robinson, a junior. His third team foul number eight. Corey Thomas shooting two now. Makes the first for 19 total points tonight. Wildcats with 62. Checking out will be Solomon Robinson, number 23. Checking back in for the Hawks, Jamarcus Mack. And Jabori Thomas, 20 points tonight. And that might be the end of the night for Jacory Thomas, I think. quickly down, closely guarded by Smith-Johnson for the Wildcats. Ooh, nice block there 
by Kedrick Brown. Gets the, the steal and the block. Quickly down to Brandon Bordalis. Bordalis now with seven points. It's the St. Pierre, the visionary of this, this school to put together this television station, if you will, here. And also has a, a new class that he introduced. It's going to be vet tech, where you get to work with the, the animals and stuff like that. You know, a lot of kids, when you're talking what you want to be, you said, I want to be a vet, I want to be a vet tech. So high interest class that he's going to get started up here next, very soon. Yeah, I believe it's going to be taught after school. And... It's un just the programs are unbelievable. I was in his office last week and we were talking about all the programs. Warren Young Jr. gets the basket. That's five points for Warren Young tonight. I don't know if I'd have uh, my starter still in the court right now. 27 point game, four minutes left. Sports medicine, pharmacy technician they have as well. Intro to health occupational, medical terminology, medical assistant, IBCA. BCA, entrepreneurship, CTE. They also have principles of marketing, businesses, real estate class, food service, food science, child development, baking and pastry. Another class you can take here, Pro Start, Serve Safe, Drones, Robotics, Cyber Society. You can also take electrical class, ROTC, Carpentry, Welding, Digital Media, Auto Paint and Body, Art. Art, gaming, and animation. We also have ceramics. And a ba basket this time by Vornado. Now with six points. We have a uh, we have a gaming a gaming lab. Uh, what is it called? Um, Esports. Esports. Yes. Mr. Chris Price uh, doing the coaching for that. Of course, Mr. Price one of the assistant for the girls team with Coach Corey Arnold. Graphic design. Choir, fine arts, band of legacy, dance, automotive service technician, firefighter, and you also have a huddle class. Some of the opportunities for Walker High School students. And Mr. St. Pierre is constantly thinking of new things that he can, you know, give to the kids where they can have Absolutely. more opportunities for success. Bornado drives in and he'll draw the foul. He got hit right in the face. goes against three, Jalen Cheney, his third, team foul number nine. Barnado at the line now. This is Barnado's first trip to the line. Barnado shoots and makes the first. Barnado a 68% free throw shooter. So if you do to come out of the game, do you miss a free throw on purpose? <laughs> That's a higher order thinking skills right there. Oh, he, he did, and it went out of bounds, you know. Tough break. That, 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 that would be kind of hard to do. It's almost like not catching a foul in, in That's right. the pop-up foul in your right field, and you got to run on third. It's kind of hard to just let it drop, you know. Quickly at the elbow. Off the mark is Cheney. Coach Skiro not letting off, saying push, push, push. Oh, we had Wildcats with a big 30-point lead here. He had still for the layup, just missed him. Workman Jr. Have a three-pointer. Oh, 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 the Little Don Meyer. The bank was open. <clears throat> Troy Seal got the basket. So Seals now with nine points off the bench. Three-pointer that just misses the mark. Steal this time by Johnson. Kick out and quickly Hawks firing it up again. We have a miss there. This ball will go out of bounds off the referee. It will remain Wildcat basketball. Workman will inbound the ball for the Wildcats. Quickly in, shooting and scoring. Braylon, Braden Sylvester, his yeah, that, first basket of the night. That play was set up specifically for him to get that basket. Wildcats now with a 34-point lead. 
three-point shot just off the mark. Will be goal basketball as Baker Jr. rockets the ball in and Austin Workman cannot handle it. It goes off out of bounds off of him. 75 seconds remaining. Quickly in, driving and missing is going to be Joseph getting up in there, and he hit really hard. Yes, he did. We'll have to check on Cheney. Foul goes against Carly on Joseph, his first, team foul number 10. That's going to... And Jalen Cheney gets up and kind of limping a little bit. That's going to hurt in the morning. And he's asking for somebody to come in for him. So what's the rule right there, Dan, if, you, if you're too hurt to take your free throws? You put somebody else in to shoot them. So he shoots and misses the first. <laughs> Makes the second. We'll have a whistle coming into the game now. Jeremy Williams. Cheney will hobble to the bench area here. Don Meyer will bring the ball in for the Wildcats. Less than a minute to go here. Non-district contest between St. Helena and Walker High School. Quickly outside, Austin Workman gets a look inside. Quickly out, three-point shot. Oh, the Wildcat bench is really excited, trying to get some of these young guys points and trying to support them here, which I really love there. You know, showing them some love off the bench. Foul goes against number 11. Javen Williams. His first team foul number in a double bonus right now. Carleon Joseph at the line, his second trip. Hey, the good news is if he makes them both, we have a running clock for the last 42 seconds. He makes the first. And the second. <laughs> 33 seconds, this one off the mark. Off the mark again. Mack gets the rebound, fights hard. Jamarcus Mack with another basket with eight points now. Silve under the goal, shoots and scores. Troy Silve now with 11 points. Wildcats with 78. Six seconds remaining in this one. Big block this time by Michael Donmar. And that is going to be the end of this contest. Wildcats are going to win this one 78 to 43. With the victory, the Wildcats improved to 19 and 5. And with the loss, St. Helena drops to 12 and 8. You know, once again, uh, Walker got out to the fast start, but I, I, it was, this St. Helena team is not a bad team. They're in a lower classification. They're extremely quick. They're small. They're uh, guard oriented, and um, they're going to be okay. I, I was pretty, I was impressed with them after after that you know after that rough start. They they mm -hmm. played well. They played Absolutely. really well. Next game for the Wildcats will be Saturday the 28th. They'll travel to Archbishop Hanna. Archbishop Hanna, a 16 and 3 team, and the next game for St. Helena. Tomorrow, as we mentioned, against taking on Independence, a team that has a record of three and twelve. So, uh, a winnable game for St. Helena next yeah, week and, and tomorrow. And Walker already said he's going to be without um, one of their starters for that Hannon game. And Hannon is a very good team, so it's going to be a tough one. Next game on television will be the, Den the Denham Springs game, a doubleheader for you, as the Lady Cats will take on the Lady Jackets at 6:15 Friday, February the 10th, and then at 7:30 the ball will take on the Denham Springs Yellow Jackets right here on channel 19 WBTR 
in Baton Rouge. So I want to thank all the digital media guys and girls back in the studio doing a great job of putting together this broadcast. And um, Dan, thank you for coming back from your on vacation or assignment, let's say that. <laughs> Glad to have you back, sir. Good to be back. All right, we're wrapping things up here once again. The Wildcats win this one 78 to 43. We want to thank each and every one of you for watching Wildcat Basketball on WBTR. We've always been inviting, but we have a bigger story to tell. A place that welcomes you to be you. Fresh, high-quality ingredients. We got that. Go ahead, do your thing. Come on, let's get weird. We don't judge. Moe's wants you to come in with your crew and their appetites. Dine in, pick up, or order on the Mo Rewards app. Either way, don't just stroll in. Roll all in to Moe's Southwest Grill. Can you just ask someone? I don't think they have the cut I need. Could you please cut a two-inch rub off for him? Absolutely. We're here for you. Just ask. Hey, do y'all make custom sandwich trays? I have a baby shower I need to go to. Absolutely. We're here for you. Hmm. I guess I could just ask. Hey, do y'all have gluten-free flour? Yes, ma'am, we do. We're here for you. At Carter's, we're here for you. Because not everyone's needs can be found right off the shelf. All you have to do is ask. Life's hard. You want to get it right, we want to help. Maybe you feel like Christians are more known for what they're against. But we want you to know that God is for you and we are for you. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, we have a place for you. We'd love for you to come and check it out. Are you tired of local car commercials and their corny one-liners? Well, let's see how many we can fit into 30 seconds. We're exploding with deals. We're taking high prices and kicking them to the curb. And there's a reason we've been the number one Chevrolet dealer in Baton Rouge for the last 34 years. Because we have a huge selection of vehicles and flashing text, including the Equinox, the Traverse, the Malibu, and much more. more. So come and see us today or visit online. And let us find the vehicle that's perfect for you. FMM is a full-service, turnkey maintenance and construction company that provides unsurpassed quality and customer service to our commercial and residential clients. We offer in-house HVAC, electrical, plumbing, and roofing services, as well as a number of everyday handyman repairs. At Facilities Maintenance Management, we want to be your single vendor solution. 